Hello everyone! Eight centuries ago, on March 12, 1229, Crusaders, under command of Holy Roman Emperor Frederick II, managed to recapture Jerusalem and surrounding lands for the second time. As 40 years before that, Muslims under leadership of Salah ad-Din or Salah ad-Din expelled Crusaders from Holy Land. It was the strangest crusade of all time. First, the Pope was against it. Second, it was made under the command of excommunicated person. Third, it was bloodless, there was no fight at all, no man killed. And fourth, and most important, it was successful. So, are you ready for the story of a strangest crusade of all times? In the 4th century, Emperor of Eastern Roman Empire Constantine ordered to build a temple above the cave where, as Christians believe, Jesus Christ was buried after his death. This church of Holy Sepulchre became one of the most sacred places in Christianity and lots of pilgrims went there from every corner of the world. In 638, Caliph Umar, son of Ali Khattab, took Jerusalem and Byzantium lost Jerusalem for good. However, Patriarch of Jerusalem, Sophronius, made the Pact of Umar with Caliph, under which all church will not be rebuilt to mosques and Muslims allowed the pilgrimage to go on. However, in 1033, two Seljuks took Jerusalem during the expansion and were shocked Christian churches and monasteries flourished on the Muslims' land. They destroyed several churches, killed the clergy and captured pilgrims, but soon they stopped this practice as pilgrimage was quite a profitable source of income. However, pilgrimage became much harder than it was. So in March 1095, during the Council of Piacenza, Pope Urban II received an envoy from Byzantium Emperor Alexios I Kaminos, who plead to help against Muslims. On November 27, on Council of Clermont, Pope made a sermon calling to reap the Holy Lands from the hands of the Turks. Many gave an oath to follow that call and sued the Red Cross on their shoulders, thus they received this crusader name and the campaign's crusades. First crusade won 1096 till 1099 and was accomplished by capturing Jerusalem. In 1187 Jerusalem was captured by Salah ad-Din after a long siege. Third crusade 1189-1192 was unsuccessful. City remained in heads of Ayubid. Participants of the fourth crusade 1202-1204 even didn't get to Holy Land, they just captured Constantinople and sacked it. And here our story is approaching. During his coronation as the King of Romans on July 25, 1213, Frederick II promised Pope Innocent III to go to crusade, however he procrastinated royally, and he didn't go. But at his coronation in Rome at November 22, 1220, he again promised to go to crusade to new Pope Honorius III, and still he didn't went to Egypt with armies of this crusade, neither in 1217 nor in 1220. Between Pope and Emperor arose serious tension, as Honorius III, who started preparations for the Fifth Crusade, proclaimed the King of Constantinople not Frederick II, but Peter II de Courtenay. In his turn, Frederick II sent to crusade army under command of Lee Kalheimer, Duke of Bavaria. However, Papal Legate Pelagio Galvani awaited Frederick to arrive personally. So he was so sure that declined the proposal of Ayyubid Sultan Al Kamil to re establish Jerusalem Kingdom in exchange for returning of Dimyata. Fifth Crusade was unsuccessful and Dimyata was lost. Though everyone thought it was Pelagio's fault, Honorius III put all the blame on Frederick II, who never arrived to Holy Land. Frederick got offended, as he sent an army and did regular supplies, so in return he accused Pope in line. Somehow they managed to settle more or less and start preparing new crusade, scheduled at June 24, 1225. Constance of Aragon, wife of Frederick, died at June 23, 1222. At the next meeting on 1223, Honorius offered him a marriage to 11-year-old Yolanda of Brienne, daughter of Jerusalem King John of Brienne, to spur the interest of Frederick for a Jerusalem Kingdom recapture. John of Brienne was not very happy with it, 
as his right to Jerusalem crown were acquired by the marriage to Yolanda's mother, and he claimed the right to rule on behalf of his daughter. With a strong son-in-law, he would have troubles with it, but Frederick promised him he wouldn't claim the king title. John of Brienne traveled all over the Europe calling for crusade. He was well received, but gathering money and troops went very slow. Army wasn't ready at spring 1224, so Frederick asked Honorius about another postponement. To avoid excommunication, Frederick at his personal meeting with Pope in San Germano on July 25, 1225, ten years after his initial oath, again reassured Honorius in his unbendable wish to go to crusade. Pope demanded warranties, so under San Germano agreement, Frederick obliged to go to crusade no longer than August 15, 1227, and be at war no less than two years. During that period, he obliged to have or maintain 1,000 knights at his expenses, or pay 50 marks to any soldiers who is ready to join. He also agreed to prepare 50 galleys and 100 transport ships, and after bring 2,000 armed people with free horses, squires and servants. As a security, he transferred 100,000 ounces of gold to intermediaries in several installments. This money would have returned to him at his arrival at Acre. In case he is unable to participate or die, money would be seized. At November 1225, in Brindidi's cathedral, Frederick married Yolanda. Frederick had issues with his empire, which prevented him to go to crusade. Despite his promises, after the marriage in November 1225 to Yolanda, he claimed himself killed of Jerusalem and his father-in-law lost his title. John was furious and a complaint to Pope. Honorius wrote to Frederick accusing his actions, but he couldn't do anything. Despite his deception, Frederick did have the rights for crown of Jerusalem as Yolanda's husband. Honorius died at March 18, 1227, and his successor Gregory IX also wanted to see how Frederick would keep his word. In the encyclic announcing of his election, Gregory called Europe for the crusade and warned Frederick would be excommunicated in case he breaks his oath one more time. Okay, okay, we get the point. Crusaders' army was gathering from all Europe, except from the France, where Louis VIII led another campaign in Languedoc against Raymond VII of Toulouse. The summer 1227 was very hot, and there were issues in water supply of army and crowd of pilgrims. Many crusaders fell ill. Most of the night went back home. In August, Crusader's fleet set sail to Holy Land from Brindisi, but many were ill, including the Emperor himself. So, just three days after the start of a journey, they have to stay at Port of Otranto. Frederick sent envoys to Pope Gregory IX to explain crusade delay and confirm his willingness to join other crusaders next year. He explained that he have to return due to epidemic, possibly plague. Oh, I, I, I can't come in because... I, uh, I have the, the plague. Well, take two aspirins and come in. But Pope no longer believed Frederick. Gregory IX was furious. He cursed Frederick and accused him in multiple crimes, including killing his wife. Emperor was condemned by his own sign under the contract in San Germano. And at September 29, 1227, Gregory excommunicated Frederick. However, Frederick was not very disappointed. As all of his vassals stood loyal to him, despite the fact that Paul cancelled all their vassal oaths to Frederick. <laughs> oh wait, you serious? Let me laugh even harder. <laughs> so he went to crusade by his own initiative and without church's blessing. However, next spring Frederick had to delay his departure one more time until the birth of his son. He was born at April 25, 1228, but Yolanda died in childbed. Thus, Jean de Brienne lost both kingdom and daughter, and became mortal enemy of Frederick and went for papal service. Despite that, Emperor of a few hundreds of knights and soldiers arrived at Palestine at September 1228. Pope again was furious as Frederick challenged his authority. Uh, sweet zombie Jesus. 
he announced the crusade as unholy and Frederick as unholy king. Frederick initiated secret talks with Egypt Sultan Al Kamil. Al Kamil desperately needed help as his brother raised the rebellion in Syria. He agreed to return Jerusalem and several other biblical towns in exchange for help against rebels in Syria. Talks were successful. Al Kamil agreed to transfer Jerusalem as well as Nazareth, Sidon, Jaffa, and Bethlehem. In return, Frederick promised not to raise any fortifications around these towns, do not touch mosques and other religious objects, as well as do not obstruct Muslims in performance of their rites. Frederick was lucky. Brother of al kamid died and he had not sent anyone to help al kamid as he managed to subdue rebellion on his own force. Thus, Crusade of Excommunicated became one of the most successful ones and the most bloodless for sure as no one died in the process. Frederick crowned himself as King of Jerusalem Kingdom in the Church of Holy Sepulchre on March 18, 1229. Again, knowing this, Pope became even more furious as he saw one more time his authority was seriously challenged. First of all, he put an interdict on all citizens of Jerusalem and other Palestinian cities under Frederick control to perform rites and call to all nightly orders of Templars and Hospitaliers to rise against newborn monarch. But they haven't got any success, so Gregory governed mercenaries and under command of John de Brienne marched to the territory of Cilician Kingdom, which was the part of Frederick's empire. To repel the attack, Frederick had to urgently return to Europe, leaving the Jerusalem his governor. However, he didn't manage to stay very long and soon he was dethroned by local barons under the leadership of Jean Ibelin of Beirut. Jerusalem was now under the control of old crusaders, who didn't want to keep promises which emperor gave in regards to locals. However, their rule was not very long. New Sultan of Egypt, as Salih, with the support of his allies of Khorizm Shachts, defeat the army of knights and capture Jerusalem, pushing Christians to the seashore of the Mediterranean Sea. Well, that's it for the story, hope you liked it. Thank you very much for listening and watching, like if you do, subscribe if you don't want to miss more. Thank you very much, bye bye.